be joined with the CEO of Mind Cure Health, Kelsey Ramsden, joins us. How are you? Tremendous. How are you? I'm excellent. It's great to have you on. It's finally got a great chance to get to know who you are and the company that you're building out. I might say a CEO, a female CEO in this psychedelic space, which is a uh, incredible feat to say the least. But um, we talk to a lot of companies. Um, what's that mean to you? I guess the first question to be, you know, leading this company and uh, most importantly, how you got involved, obviously, in the psychedelic space. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to open with the female CEO thing because this is thing not a lot of people want to touch, but I get the question every single time. So Do let's you? get it out of the way. Is that cool? Yeah, it's great. I love it. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the Google would tell you I was twice named Canada's top female entrepreneur, which of course is meritous and lovely. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is no notion of like results just are results. And so yeah. you don't get to be a place if you don't deliver. And I was born female and it's great and I love it and I wouldn't change a thing. But at the same time, you know, I just want to welcome this idea that just it's just all about delivering results. 100%. And, um, and that's how I came into Mind Cure to bridge that is I came out of construction. So before this, I built cruise ship terminals and airports and bridges and those kind of wow. things in my first company that I, I started and scaled. And I actually was retired a year ago. And through my own journey in psychedelic therapy myself. Wow. Okay. And to a colleague, the only thing I'll come out of, out of retirement to do is to lead a psychedelics company. That's and incredible. So, yeah. So here we are today. So I think that answers the question. It was, it's my own journey and my own understanding of how to build big things and scale them and execute on time and on budget. Cause that's all we do. in, yeah. in the other businesses, you know, isn't it delivering results. Well, you just got done indicating, obviously, you've produced in the past uh, with being back to back uh, entrepreneurs of the year. Uh, we look at this space right now and the transformation. I find that fascinating that you had your own personal journey through it all. Um, so as you got into this space, why do you think or is it everything that you thought it would be? And what have you learned so far? Yeah, I think it's early days in this space. You know, the it's Every time you're an early adopter, you feel like you're in an echo chamber, like everybody knows about it, but it's only because you and a hundred of your friends do. And I, yeah. I don't believe, you know, we're kind of there. Yeah. Um, and so big splashes are being made, renaissance and psychedelics, lots of capital flowing in. Um, what I think we'll see is like these psychedelics people have been doing this work in the dark for a long time to long their great time. long time. So I think the first thing we have to declare is like a lot of respect for the folks who've been keeping this alive for, for a while. And then the capitalists show up, myself included, and we unlock all this capital and they're looking around going, who do we trust? Right. Um, and so I think over the coming months, we'll start to see a little bit of the, you know, the cream rise to the top of the, the folks who are both capitalists yeah. and understand the power of psychedelics and the high integrity and the trust and the science we need to deliver. So let's and, talk. And, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, let's talk about your company then mind cure health. What's the narrative that you're trying to build within the space. And most importantly, um, I guess a good question that can be asked, why should investors or even consumers for that most part, trust what you're building out? Yeah. Great. I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because it's so pivotal to everything, I've ever built in my career yep. is I, I in in construction it's high risk high reward yeah and, and lots of folks get knocked out particularly in the real estate piece as well and if you don't have your integrity at the end of the day you're never gonna you're never gonna come back right and I feel the same way about building this out in psychedelics which is the foundation of it is relationships right and that's how we built our team and that's how we're building our business so relationships trust first integrity then the next thing I look at is, okay, we're early days in an industry. And this is for any investor who's vetting any company. Never mind mind cure. I'll talk about why we align with this. But if you're interested in psychedelics on the whole. It's great. I think it's important to look at revenue horizons. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about something here where a lot of these research programs are not coming to the line in the next six months or mm -hmm. a year or even two. Right. Like a lot of these things are coming across the line in two, three, five, ten. Right. So between now and then, while the Hail Mary is still in the air, 
maybe a person could consider how these companies, and again, only 14% of research programs for drugs get across the line. Right. Okay. So there's something to consider there. And if you do, heck yes. Like it's, it's happy time and we're all in, we're all in Lambos. So, so good diverse, diversification is huge. I think so. And, and I think in the near term, when we're looking across the different models, and this is another thing for consumers or, or investors to consider, we have different models going. So there's some people who are clinic models, some people are drug dev models, some people are hybrids, tech, et cetera. Yep. And what MindCure is doing, of course, we're doing long-term research. I mean, you can't help but do it because yep. the payoffs can be so tremendous. Yeah. Uh, particularly when you have relationships in the field and they kind of know what's already working in, in the world and you drive that back into the lab, like that, that's our strategy. Dr. Dan Engel, uh, Hamilton Morris, right? They know what works in the world. We bring mm -hmm. it to the lab and I think we have a head mm. start. In the near term, we've got a technology platform that we're building out that we believe will be the backbone of, of the deployment of psychedelics. So we have all these therapists and they want to have psychedelic therapy as an option but they're just starting in training. Right. We have all these people like you and me who, you know, well, maybe not you and me, but the other folks who are a little bit more trepidatious about taking psychedelic therapy on. Mm -hmm. So our technology allows um, all of that to be biometrically measured, monitored. It's kind of like the Netflix of psychedelic medicine. So right. The okay. Medicine protocols get bumped up and the best integration protocols get bumped up. So you get quantified medicine at scale. Um, and that's our near-term revenue piece where some people have the near term of, of clinics. And then in the short term, of course, you know, we have nootropics and the kind of things that can help your, what I call mental hygiene, but all <laughs> yeah. of it, all of it across everything we're doing is to me, just like to ping into people's minds. We're here to not just generate mental health, but we're here to drive mental wealth. Right. Just like, let's not be just sufficient. <clears throat> let's be exceptional. Let's be transparent and be straight up as to what our goals are. And, you know, um, one of the things I did want to ask about your business model is mm -hmm. the conversation about uh, ATMA. Um, mm -hmm. That was Canada's first commercial provider of legal psychedelic assisted therapy. Your company, MindCure, this month completed its initial strategic equal investment to approximately 13% ownership in ATMA. So, what was the appeal and should we expect more, I guess, of this type of investment from MindCure going forward? Yeah, I think I like clinics. I like the clinic model. Do you? Yeah, I do. I, I, there's a variety of reasons why I think it's good. I think I won't get into the minutiae of it, but what I will say again is this idea of how do we drive revenue in the psychedelic space? <laughs> Great question. I'm fundamentals builds business builder, like call it simple, but I like making money. Yeah. That is pretty consistent. I yep. think I think there's a good model there. And so we looked around and, and I thought, okay, on the technology platform, we need to be in clinics. Okay. And we don't want to just focus on Canada and the States. We want to be getting data on all these medicines, ayahuasca, uh, ibogaine, psilocybin, ketamine, you know, all of the things. And Atmos plans are to scale globally. And they just announced a location in Costa Rica that unlocks a number of other medicines. Mm -hmm. So the way that I'm looking at these investments is how can we be involved in clinics where, where we can ensure that they use our tech. So it's a double revenue model. Yep. Not only we get some of their revenue from them running the clinics, but we get revenue of our tech deployment into those clinics. And, um, and Walk I think- Walk me through how the technology will work. Yeah, great. So if you're going to come in uh, as a client, yep. patient, whatever we want to call those individuals, I like to hold them as clients. Um, two weeks before your psychedelic integration or, or intervention, rather, you're going to be outfitted with a wearable and it's going to get the baseline. Hmm. And then while you come, when you come in for your session, your therapist is going to be able to monitor you in session, as well as we're building out custom proprietary tracks AI backed. Okay. So when you're in session and your therapist says, all right, we want to take Shad to, you know, tension for this amount of time. And we want to take him to elation and then calm and this and that. And, and by okay. medicine, we're designing those tracks so we can customize your experience to you. And what, what's underlying that. And I think is important for people to understand is it's not just like spa music. 
Right. Um, but if you get off on Metallica and that's actually what makes you calm. Yeah. What makes me calm is, you know, some electronica. The algorithm in behind that is going to start noticing how your body's responding. So it's actually creating wow, a custom psychedelic. Yeah, man. It's custom psychedelics for every individual person based on how their body is responding. So where did the idea come from and how much of a demand and interest have you heard and experienced with this whole rollout so far? Well, the idea came from my own psychedelic experience. That's incredible. And, you know, like, I wish I had these things. And yeah. then to, oh, we've over the last five months, we've talked to, I don't know how many therapists, clients, patients, like researchers trying to get at the, like, what's the root, root, root of the experience that we can transform and measure because we need the data, the big data play right. is here. And uh, yeah, and so what's ha what's happening now is I'm I actually sent a text to our CTO the other day. I was like, Jeff, I'm afraid. He's like, Why? I'm like, I just got another 15 clinics. <laughs> you know, like we're getting to a place where our beta, we have all these key opinion leaders lining up to to be on the beta platform. And when wow. anyone who knows about scaling tech knows you can't over deploy your beta because you want to make adjustments. Um, so I, I mean, clearly that's really exciting a and it also puts a lot of pressure on us to, to speed this thing up because, um, you know, a lot of folks want it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think that's a fabulous idea and especially with the, uh, genre of music, as you're indicating, it's like, is that there's ever a bigger time with the, uh, electronica type, uh, format, but I could see how there'd be, a interesting to say the least as to how people like, you know, respond, I guess, in certain situations like that. But uh, you personally found it really helped. Yeah. And, uh, and the other piece is what nobody seems to be talking about, which blows my mind is integration. So imagine you, you go into psychedelic therapy, you have your psychedelic experience and for everyone yep. it's different, but I'll, I'll speak to mine. So uh, in, in one of my, one of my early sessions, I had the experience of being universal. Okay. Okay. So you go on a Tuesday and you experience being universal and then you come home to your partner and they say, how to go? And you're, you know, it's ineffable explaining mm -hmm. being universal. And then you have to orient back into life, this whole like returning to the norm and, and now your new viewpoint on the world and how this medicine can transform you. And uh, so you integrate, that's what we call it in this work. You spend some time integrating mm -hmm. all of the metrics that matter about how well this worked for you are collected in the integration, right? In that next month to three months, it's like, how's Shad actually doing? Not just did he come back changed, but okay, so now what? And did it stick? Mm. And that's where we're investing a bunch of our time with iStream, the tech platform is doing the same thing we're doing up front with the AI back stuff, but doing it in integration. So it's going to say, Hey, how about listening to some music? How about doing some breath work? Would you right. maybe consider some meditation? And all of those pieces as well are data driven, science backed, research backed components. So that over time you get this totally customized AI driven um, integration protocol that works for you best by you. That's great. The so benefits. Stuff that's this, not is, this is the positive sides of technology. That's incredible. Um, wanted to ask you as well, you made news this month by discovering a potential opportunity from Ibogaine, uh, mm -hmm. which is a psychoactive substance extracted from a shrub native to Western Africa. So it may have the ability to repair the brain in the context of addiction, which is huge. It, all, it also may have a potential for treatment of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, which is an alarming rate right now, especially in Canada and the US. So what did you see that made your target of Ibogaine specifically for uh, potential therapeutic use in, in treating these, uh, you know, these pains and brain trauma? Yeah, so there's three things I wanna to touch on here. One is, Ibogaine is an amazingly powerful medicine. It mm -hmm. is legal in Canada, currently illegal in the States, but available around the world. Part of the reason we identified Ibogaine was in initial uh, talks with Hamilton Morris, um, who, if you follow him, he's like what I always call him, he's like the Anthony Bourdain of psychedelics. So he travels the world, he understands what's working everywhere and comes back. And, um, and so exploring that, we looked at 
what could be done with this medicine? So we went mm -hmm. into research with something we built called Psycholodge, which is our own kind of proprietary data repository of all the known psychedelic research available. Yep. And we found a few signals in the noise. Okay. And we realized the supply of Ibogaine is actually in, in peril. So right. the actual naturally occurring aboga plant is endangered. So we don't want to go and, you know, kill that off. And in the lab, it's really hard to get produced up here. So we started producing our own Ibogaine, started that product or project uh, about a month ago. This idea that in the interim, while we're making our own Ibogaine in the lab, synthetic, obviously. Um, and Can I ask you, what's the, what's the feedback been as far as that synthetic versus, say, natural um, product? And uh, some of the, uh, you know, we hear different things about people wanting a natural uh, substance versus synthetic. But what yeah. would your response to that be? I suppose it's, um, there are some purists, and I yeah. get it. You know, yeah. I like organic things. I eat a lot of them. Uh, but if I want consistency and assurance, yeah, we, I tend to want when we're talking about my brain, I'm going for the synthetic thing. And and when we're doing research that we'll be doing with our Ibogaine on these yeah. know, indications that we're exploring which to pick, um, it has to be consistent. Otherwise, the, the science isn't reliable. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I think there's room in the market for both, but what I can say specific to a number of things, uh, a boga, a lot of the mescaline, right? Like you, these cacti take so long to grow and they're being harvested. So I think if you're mindful and you want to be a bit of a good citizen, as well as a great capitalist, yep. synthetics are the way to go. Yeah. Makes per, um, good point for sure. I wanted to ask one last thing is, you know, roadmap, what do you think, uh, the next six to 12 months and. What are the next events or milestones investors should be looking for when focusing on your company? Sure. So we're going to continue exploring opportunities like Atma. You know, we okay. think that's great strategic deployment on the tech. Yeah. The research side, like I say, we're finalizing a couple of programs and you'll see some things around um, some partnerships. Mm -hmm. The Ibogaine advancement by Q4, we're getting to full GM, CGMP scale up on the Ibogaine production of um, that psychedelic drug. And, uh, and in the interim, you know, just as we all do, as we advance things, we apply for patents and assure yep. that we, like in the old Canadian hockey terms, we put our elbows up in the corners a little bit to make sure that we're making space. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, and I think, um, you know, a fair amount of news on the iStream piece as we start to as we start to talk a little bit about some of the proprietary AI and some yep. of the some of the data we're driving and and um, so a, lo a lot going on. But it's it's great work. You know, it's a great time to be in psychedelics. Where do you? Uh, you know, I always love to ask this question to a lot of the different companies that we have on. Are you a firm believer that this will change the healthcare system? It can't not. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, here's here's what I am witnessing. And this isn't just because I'm a CEO of a psychedelics company. And clearly, I'm highly biased because I'm here doing this work. Yeah. But what we see um, is when religion and politics are superseded by science, things move quickly. Yeah. Right. And what we know is we have an opiate, like a cata cataclysmic opiate situation going on. Yep. We have tremendous depression, anxiety, PTSD. A and we have these situations where with the science backing, right, the data will move the science. And then the stories will start to move the culture. Mm -hmm. People like me, the 44 year old mother of three will eventually come forward and say, I did psychedelic therapy and it transformed my life and I'm no longer depressed or suicidal. It's incredible. I mean, that can't help but change things. How do you feel today? Amazing. Do you? Amazing. I mean, look, here's the thing. This is not the silver bullet. You know, you're not going to walk in and come out like Superman. Um, but you will walk in and come out highly equipped to take it on. Mm. It makes it makes what needs to be done clear and doable. Yeah. Approachable. And certainly, again, I can only speak to my own case, but in my own case, um, 
I, I can't, you know, it sounds trite to say I can't say where I'd be without it, but I can tell you I would still be running businesses that my heart and soul wasn't necessarily in. Yeah. And um, and the amount of freedom it's given me and agency it's given me to just go out and do the things that I want to do most, like this fully expressed, what well, you know, the mental wealth thing. Like it's the quality I, of life, right? Yeah. I still yeah. have some days that aren't optimal, but for the most part, like 98% of the time, I am absolutely living my best life. That's great. Well, we are happy to obviously have you on. We're interested and obviously excited for the direction where this company is going. I've spoken to a lot of people in the industry that speak very highly of you and uh, really like the vision. And most importantly, the person that you are that you bring to the table as far as working. So I can see a lot of great relationships that you will form over this time. But uh, most important, let's keep in touch. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, uh, speak with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always. You're welcome. Keep in touch.